I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup Strengths Explorer Series recorded January 24th, 2019. Strength Explorer is a podcast series that dives deep into the 10 talent themes of the Clifton Youth Strengths Explorer, designed for adults who are in, in, interested in accepting, affirming, and growing the individual potential within a child. This series expands your language to describe what is right and strong. We're going to talk a lot about that during the program in children ages 10 through 14. To further your understanding, check out Gallup's book, Strengths-Based Parenting, available wherever books are sold, or you can start uh, on our website, shop.gallup.com. And today's theme is achieving. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaches, resources, and training needs. And I should say for today, Strengths Explorer has its own website. If you just go to strengthsexplorer, all one word, dot com, all our resources are on that page as well. You can also catch the video on both streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening. We call that podcasting. It's available for you off our coaches blog. We, uh, you can get to that, coaching.gallup.com or email us coaching at gallup.com. Mike Librant is our host today. She's a workplace consultant here at Gallup. And Micah, great to see you. And we want to welcome your mom to the chat room as well. <laughs> Hi. Hi, mom. Jim, I think you nailed that intro. No reason to be nervous ever again. Well, good. Good. Well, we are going to dive into uh, achieving today. I'm, I'm going to admit to you, Micah, it's been a struggle for me to learn these because the names are a little bit different than what we do with, with Clifton Strengths. Right. Is there a reason why we ch they're different? There's not enough words in the English language is all I can figure out as being the reason. You know, it's a similar struggle that I have uh, working with selection and a lot of our talent-based hiring products because there are talent themes that exist in some of our selection tools that um, do that sound very similar to to talent themes within our development tools, which is Clifton Strengths, um, and they don't always mean the same thing. Honestly, I think it's because you've got a whole bunch of very smart people trying to name something that is so innate and we don't always pick words that that are exclusive. I, I, can't, I can't think of any other reason, but I'll research it. I'll ask our people and see if there's more of a reason than that. Okay. Well, it is a challenge and I would I would actually recommend if you're joining us for the series for the first time, go out to strengthsexplorer.com. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of information guides out there. It's available for you. A parent guide, a teacher guide. There's a, a sample report that's available for you if you want to take a peek. And as we work through these themes, really begin, don't, don't force yourself, don't make this jump to say this theme, I understand it because I understand a close theme in, in Clifton Strengths. Don't do that. Just right. let's, let's learn these as individual units. And, and the, the temptation is to really try to tie them and, and don't, don't start there. There'll be plenty of time for that and some discussions as we talk about later, but resist that urge and tendency. Micah, as we think about achieving, let's give it a definition. Let's start talking about it. Certainly. Well, I, I do want to say, if you've not listened to our kickoff show of uh, First Strengths Explorer, go back and catch that one with Jerlene Mosley. She talks a lot about you know why this is really a standalone assessment. It is different than Clifton Strengths. It's not saying that we started with Clifton Strengths and then we worked to broaden it and, and use the same research. We really didn't. This is an assessment for students typically middle school in the U.S. to ages 10 to 14, um, and it does stand on its own. But forgive yourself if you are trying to say, okay, I know my own adult Clifton strengths, and therefore I'm trying to connect that to the Strengths Explorer themes. That's how human beings learn, right? There's plenty of learning theory that says we like building blocks and stepping stones. So I would say uh, resist the urge to think that there is some sort of behind the scenes invisible spider web that's going to connect these, but lean into what you do know about yourself and ask yourself, how might I see myself in a kid? You know, what parts of me do I know that are powerful and true that also might reflect and be similar or be different or complementary to those talents that I'm seeing in children? So and, that, and, that, that's sort of where I would go with that. And let me add one more piece. When you're saying, what do I see? What are the best things that I see? That's, we kind of really want to focus this on positive. We, we do this with the Clifton Strengths, but I think it's even more important with with children that we really focus on the positive. We're not talking about balconies and basements. We're not talking right. about weaknesses. That's not what we're doing here with this. This is really about what's right and what's strong. And we really want to focus on the positive. So keep all those things in mind. We'll remind you each week as we go into this, as we think about this. But Mike, as we define achieving, uh, let's have it stand on its own. And how would we define it? 
Great. So achieving is is a beautiful talent. It is uh, the short definition here that you'll find across all of our material is you have more energy and more goals than other people. You love a sense of accomplishment. If we go a little bit deeper into that, uh, kids with achieving are all about doing. The more that they have on their plate, the more they get done. Now, they don't have to be top dog. They don't have to be number one. They're really drawn to that idea of finishing a job. Um, and you might you might count on them to always truly enjoy being busy. Uh, that probably also includes looking for the next thing to do, putting a lot on their plate, um, attracting a lot on their plate, asking for more things, being delighted when they're given more options of activity. Um, adults likely are going to slow down achieving children. They can go and go for a long period of time and actually enjoy it. Michael, we're going to spend uh, some time using this term strength spotting throughout the series. It's a term that's used in the book, Strengths Based mm -hmm. Parenting. If you haven't got that, you should uh, pick that up. But um, can, first of all, talk a little bit about what do we mean when we talk about strength spotting? And then what are some of the ways we can spot achieving uh, in our in these children? This is probably my favorite concept and where the most of my heart around this podcast lies because strength spotting is something we need to be doing for all human beings, regardless of age. It is this concept of knowing enough about talent to be able to name it and notice it and invest in it without needing to necessarily have the assessment there to back you up. So um, when we talk about strength spotting and there's a fantastic entire section of our, our strength based parenting book that's dedicated to this. Really, this is presented as your surest option um, for focusing on the talents of students who are younger than the assessment allows to, to take. So kids who are younger than 10. Uh, our option is not necessarily to put them through an assessment. Um, it's also not to assume that they've even solidified into a top three out of 10 potential talent themes within Strengths Explorer, but it is how do I use this language and my knowledge of what that language means to be able to notice some behaviors and talk about those behaviors in a positive way. Now, as the mom of a three-year-old, <laughs> I'm, I'm in love with this, but I also think about those times when I've been working with students of all ages, um, up to older than me, where I just wish I had a better way to connect what I was seeing with something instantly positive. So here are some behaviors you might notice in an achieving child. And again, this can be um, instant replay of things that you call out. It's it's like not waiting for that highlight reel in the locker room later, but being able to see, I noticed this in you, and I think it's indicative that you're great achieving. Um, so, so a couple things you might notice about, about kids who are high in the achieving talent. Um, it might be that they have a plan. It might be that they have a list. Um, it might be that they've got um, even just desires of a whole bunch of things that they want to do. Uh, think about an image of a kid, you know, holding up maybe a to-do list and it might have everything from, uh, now I want to quote Buddy the Elf, first we're going to snuggle and then we're going to make snow angels. <laughs> but it's it's about thinking about all these these doing opportunities. Um, they're probably going to love when something is accomplished, love when something is completed. They might be busier or keep themselves more occupied than other children around them. They may feel, um, and you might they might even tell you this or you might sense this, that they should consistently be doing more than they're actually doing. Uh, they're probably going to be frustrated with sitting still. Um, I was talking to my best friend yesterday, and she told me that her preschooler uh, is, is a non-napper. That's what they call him. And he, um, he struggles with taking a nap at school. And the teacher, I guess, asked him what was going on. And he said, my head is just so full of ideas and my body was wants to move. <laughs> so the the body wants to move side of that um, might be a little bit of, of an achieving talent. Um, they're always creating projects, imagining plans. And I think it's just a real attraction to the potential to execute. I used to, as a child, uh, I used to spend a lot of time messing things up just so I could fix them. <laughs> but I like the activity of fixing them. I liked being busy. You know, okay. I liked doing things. I liked I wasn't, I wasn't trying to fix it for fix it's sake. I just like to think of different ways we could rearrange this or do things. And I loved to get those kinds of things done. It was really, it was really great. Hey, first call out to our brand new chat room, by the way, Jennifer uh, says like adults, kiddos have all 10 talents. It's those talents that show up often that we can spot. Can you kind of uh, respond to that statement a little bit, Micah? 
Yeah. And this is where uh, Strengths Explorer is, again, different from Clifton Strengths. Sure, kids all have all 10 talents somewhere, but the idea of, of Strengths Explorer is, is not and never will be to look at your full profile and compare um, what do you have high versus what do you have low. Um, it's, it's designed differently. It's designed to say um, these really are things that show up shiny and positive and true. Um, and knowing your top three is the goal. Um, and so I think that's, that's definitely a different perspective than we have around Clifton Strengths, where we, as, as a business, will go forward and say, you know, it's important that even your first experience with Clifton Strengths is to see all 34, to be able to, from a real mature level, understand what you're playing with, what you're not playing with. How do you quickly talk about complementary partners and collaboration? Um, we know that middle schoolers are still developing. And because they've not solidified yet really who they are, it's not necessarily super helpful to talk about who they're not. So that's why we, we want to make sure that we talk about just those top three themes. Um, and that's something that uh, you'll have you'll have our full support in doing and that we want to make sure that we're consistently talking about, you know, um, how is this theme uh, showing up for you today? How healthy is it for you? You know, so it's there's a lot of awareness and a lot of development you can do. I think you can notice perhaps even um, some things that could be frustrating to an achieving child or about an achieving child. Uh, sometimes when I have to sit still, sometimes when my parents can't keep up with me, right? Sometimes my achieving might feel like it's it's not getting the love and attention and nurturing that it needs. That is, um, I think, a part of that spectrum of possibility where you can do a lot of development without needing to necessarily place that development around spaces that, that they don't possess as, as top talents. Jim, did I, do you think I answered that question or did yeah, I miss part of it? I think so. You, you inspired me as I think through as a, as a grandparent now. And we, I try to spend time uh, with a three-year-old figuring out, spotting those tendencies. And then how do we take advantage of them? Or how do we create play in ways that take advantage of those themes? Uh, we're going to talk about some words here in a second. These are adult words, but they could be used by the students uh, um, as well. But I think it's that same idea of when I understand these things, then how can I create an environment around me where I can use these productively and positively, right? What kind of situation? So you know, I, if I have a child that like may like to sit and maybe calm and good with things that take time, uh, puzzles are, are some things that that play can then be designed uh, for those activities. And you can begin to see those. It takes, I think it takes Mike a lot of trial and error, right? You got to yeah. figure these things out. You got to be watching. I think uh, for a lot of people, I just say, this is really an exercise in watching. We have the assessment that helps you kind of for 10 to 14 year olds kind of help helps to kind of define that and, and figure some of those things out. But as a parent, a grandparent, a babysitter, a friend, a whatever, you can also begin to see these things that could create positive outcomes. So as we think of these words that help describe them, what, what, what are these words for achieving that would describe? Yeah. So think about, you, know, you might think about this kid as the go-getter, um, goal-oriented, a hard worker, a self-starter, active, energetic, productive. Um, and I think it's it's our job as, as adults who care about kids to think about the positive side of all of these words in terms of how do we understand that kid for ourselves, and how do we help other parents or other teachers or other adults in that kid's life truly understand what they bring to the table. So that might be some of those, those I think, words that you might use to describe and accept that achieving talent. Mm -hmm. we, we'd love to hear some of the words you have. Just this, it's a good dialogue. Join us on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash uh, gal uh, called to coach. There it is. It's been a while since I said that. I was like, what is that address? Um, love to hear words maybe you're coming up with, with achieving. Sure. What, how, do, how, do, how does that work? When we think of this, when, once you've, we've identified, and we've kind of danced around this a little bit already, Micah, but once we've identified these what, what kind of things can we, what can we do? What, uh, yeah. You know. yeah. What do I do with this? <laughs> yeah. So I think we often remind adult managers that every interaction they have with their employees is an opportunity to leave that employee more engaged. Uh, it's pretty similar when you think about the relationship between adults and children. So the moments that we share with kids really are opportunities to engage them as well. But they're also, I think the stakes are even higher because it's a chance to help them start to name their own talents. Um, consider great conversation starters that, that really 
really focus on talent to inspire myself. When I was saying, what am I trying to write in these notes? I had the headline, what would be better than asking how was your day <laughs> that would personalize something for a kid with achieving. And I'm already on that train where the four minute drive home from school to home. Um, I already get the like, don't talk to me, mom. So find the right space to start these conversations. But you might think about asking, what did you complete today? What are you working hard on? Uh, what are you excited about? What made you proud? Who helped you do better work today? Really focusing on um, maybe even that uh, that element of their their achieving talent that's always thinking about what's the next thing that I can do. So what are you excited about doing tomorrow? What's something you'd like to try? Yeah, adults get those on some cards so you remember them. That they, you know, if it's in the car, Micah, having some cards reminding you of these questions because you've had a long day too, and just <sighs> coming up with small talk is sometimes difficult. Um, uh, maybe writing those things down and having them available for you. Uh, and helpful. depending on the maturity or the age of the child, tell them you're going to ask them that question. Pick yeah. one um, and tell them in the morning that, you know, this is what I want to be curious about at the end of the day. You're helping set that kid's lens toward their own talent and toward what that talent needs. Um, because you don't, you don't raise kids to keep them. They're going to go out into a world where they need to have the language and the, and the knowledge of how do they best thrive. And I think the, the courage to be able to ask for it. So that's what you're setting them up in, in asking those questions. Maybe the most important question we do in the series here, and how do we affirm? Like, what are some ways we affirm children with this theme? So I think achieving children really thrive when other people are acknowledging the effort that they put into it um, and also acknowledging what it is they're finishing, their accomplishments. So three ideas here. Offer specific praise about something that they're really working hard on. Um, know whether it's something that they finished or something that they're still working on because that's probably going to be important to them. Um, number two, ask about what they've done and what they're excited about doing next. Now, achieving children also have a load of energy. You know what? Active and energetic were, were two of those words we used to describe achieving. This can ooze out of them in a bunch of different ways. It might be physically, but it might also be emotionally. Uh, it might just be cognitively. So create big space for their big energy. That might mean that you need to have several toys out all at once, uh, lots of tabs open on their computer or their tablet, or you know, maybe it's just the physical time with a, a trusted labradoodle in a safe backyard, <laughs> but create big space for that big energy. I think also the, the thing I would add on how do you affirm it is realizing that achieving children want to know that they can master something and complete it. Uh, so when a task seems too daunting, they might actually stray away from it. If it's really important, um, help them break the large task into smaller milestones. Celebrate like crazy once those milestones are complete. Um, but an example of this might be clean your room doesn't have to be the task in itself. Uh, we could say, hey, let's make a plan for 10 steps to a cleaner room and let's talk about how you'll feel when it's done and then let them lead the plan and, and think about what do we celebrate as, as, we, as we move along. Yeah, I'd, I'd almost, as you were thinking about the, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about reward system. In other words, not just do this, you get that, but how do we fashion reward system to really play to our strengths? Cool. And, you know, that this may be a, a section we just think through or what are some, you know, as we're thinking about these, what are those rewards that lead to strengths-based outcomes on what they're doing? Not just you get candy or I give you chocolate or you get to be on the iPad. But what are those things you, it, when you said clean your room, uh, you can say, let's make a plan for 10 steps to, to a cleaner room. For some children, that can be a the, the, the challenge of having a checklist to check off uh, or something to follow or or directions to that are that are clear. Maybe a reward in itself to get it done. And it doesn't require an external uh, reward of sorts. So I don't know, just something to think through as you were saying. Micah, <laughs> Wouldn't anything it be you... great if we grew up thinking clean rooms were rewards? I mean, that would be like, oh, you know, every time you make a healthy choice, it's a good thing. If only I could learn that. <laughs> well, we, we, I think we do when we get those motivations right. Like when we we're do. in the groove and we've got the motivations going, whether it be working out or a clean house or clean car or well-maintained, whatever, you know, for me, it's a it's a it's a mode one that it's for me. That's incredibly satisfying to see those results. I don't have to be enticed into going out my own, to mow my lawn. I don't need a, I don't need anything at the end. The and the result is that because I've got these 
themes that play to that, right? And I think with children, it doesn't always have to be iPad time or does, doesn't always have to be candy or chocolate or whatever, right? There, we can come up with these this system of strengths-based rewards where it plays to those themes instead of against them. Jim, you I made me want to re rewind live TV just now and see exactly what you said, because I think it was huge. If we get the motivations right, um, you know, it doesn't have to feel like work. <laughs> if we get the motivations right, the act is the reward. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn so much about our adult selves through this <laughs> Strengths Explorer series. That was great. <laughs> Super good. We have a section called the Go Do It section. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just what we're going to do. The Go Do It. Just go do it. So what are those, Micah? So I had to say, shout out to Mrs. Persley, my fifth and sixth grade English teacher, who taught me that the allot is a, a monster. You do not spell a lot as one word. And so she drew this monster called an allot to remind us that a lot were two different words. I'm going to break that totally down and create a new monster called the go do it. Uh, <laughs> for this section. So I will remind you that your Strengths Explorer results do include very specific action items for adults and action items for, for kids. And they're not prescribed. Even graphically, it's just an open box to decide which of these you really want to check and, and try more of. But there's a lot already in that, that report and different than um, perhaps different reports that you might be dancing around with with Clifton Strengths. This all comes as one big packet when you when you complete it. So that's that's certainly something you can look into. Um, what I'm giving you in our go do it are three specific things you could do this week for your achieving child um, to help them grow. Number one, offer three different choices every day on how this achieving child might want to spend their energy. You get a bonus if these require minimal supervision and a super bonus if they're free. <laughs> so you're looking for ways to develop their sense of direction toward a goal. Um, here's an example. You might say, hey, we've got an hour between your homework being done and dinner starting. How do you most want to invest in that hour? Do you want to use your journal, play outside, go interview a neighbor about their day or do something else? Simply just asking that and and creating the space that here you've got an empty um, an empty time that you get to fill with something busy. And I think in in starting your your brain that way of it could be this or that or this. What I specifically did with those three samples was think about physical, emotional, and cognitive options. Um, I, I don't think uh, all adults are going to come up with all those ideas super easily. And I don't think that that has to be up to you. What we're talking about is trying to get into that habit, get into that rhythm. So do start by offering those ideas. You don't have, they're not prescriptive, but being able to say, here's a menu of some of the ways that you could use your energy. What are you most interested in right now is going to kickstart their, their ability to start to do that on their own. Number two, Make a list of three to five milestones that your child wants to accomplish this week. Um, track the progress toward those milestones in a public space. It might be in your kitchen, um, on their locker at school. Maybe it's just in a shared online document. Number three, forgive your kid if they are in the zone about a project and they don't hear you when you want to interact with them. Sometimes achievement requires a lot of talent, requires a lot of focus. So make a note of it and ask them later and praise them for that talent. Micah, we want to remind folks, we'd love to have a come, have them come out and join us live for each of these. Following the same theme Thursday schedule, we will be creating a separate channel for this, a separate podcast. The very first one will go out via theme Thursday, but then we will have separate channels and resources available for this as well. We'd love to have you come out and join us live. Uh, very predictable uh, uh, pieces to walk through, but Micah, you wanted to remind everyone kind of why we're doing this. And so let's just kind of one more time, what are we trying to achieve here? Jim, the goal of this podcast really is to improve the conversations that we're having with children, uh, to help adults accept, affirm, and grow natural talents within kids. Um, I do want to you know, extend a special thanks to a couple of people who are helping us pull this off. Dr. Mary Reckmeyer, who wrote the book that we're basing a lot of this off of. You can pick that up. It's called Strengths Based Parenting. Jerlene Mosley, who you can go back and see her help us with this kickoff um, in our, our first episode of Strengths Explorer. And Johnny Liesfeld, who is my kid voice for a lot of the a lot of the words that I wrote down and realized sounded way too old and stuffy. <laughs> so this is a fun opportunity to get to talk about what's right with humanity, just starting it with younger people. I think John helped us wrap up 
no, it was Roseanne helped us wrapped up, but John was the first one back uh, season one of uh, of Theme Thursday, right? And we had him on. So if you want to go, so. I think yeah. we did. I don't think that but was you though. No. It, was it you? Did I interview him? You I interviewed him. him. Uh, this yeah. is his son who's helping us with these. Yeah. So it's even cooler. Yeah, Kurt's son. So, uh, and just a reminder, we'll stay around for some post show. So another reason to come out and join us live is we, Micah and I will stay around for a little post show um, as well. Some chat, some extra stuff you don't get. It doesn't ever make the recording. It's just for us on the live show. I'd love to have you come, uh, come out and join us live. We'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. In this case, you can also go to strengthsexplorer.com and uh, all the resources are out there. You can send us your questions or comments if you like to be a guest blogger. We take submissions for that throughout the year. Send us an email, put guest blogger in the subject line to coaching at gallup.com. You can also catch recorded audio and video of this program as well as all the past ones, a brand new called the Coach Sorter that sits on the Coach's blog. You can head out there right now and you should bookmark this, coaching.gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, you've heard this and you're like, wow, I want to do more of this. Maybe think about being a coach. We have a list of all of our courses. Uh, some of them lead to certified coaches, uh, coaching certifications. Some of them just lead to some awesome training that's available for you. You can head out to our courses page, courses.gallup.com, and see where they're being offered and available all around the world. I think, Micah, we're doing a BP10 training right now in Mumbai in India, which is pretty great. And so there's a wide variety of training available. Did you want to say something? Were you? I thought you were... I thought sorry, I, no, that was no. a niche. Oh, sorry. oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, of course, if you want to sign up for all the future live webcasts, you're like, hey, when are these things and how do we get to them? You can visit our Gallup Eventbrite page, just gallup.eventbrite. We didn't get too complicated with that. B R I T E. Gallup.eventbrite.com. I mentioned this earlier, but join us on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. Many of you, many are finding this now through our podcast and we want to welcome you to those uh, as well. If you've recently joined us through that, we thank you for doing that. I want to thank you for joining us today. If you're listening live, don't go anywhere. We'll do a little post-show work. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.